What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we are giving you a state of the market in stock picks for April 26, 2022. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do give weekly and daily updates to get you prepared for the day in the week ahead, such as earnings, events, and technical analysis. So let's get right into state of the market. Uh, the market today, as you can see, technical wise was pretty flat. We had a pop towards the end of the day. Uh, the good thing was, was we did not sell any further. We had two solid days of selling last week. Uh, we had Thursday and Friday after Powell had spoken about a 50 point basis move going into the next meeting. Uh, only to be followed by a Friday full of 75-point uh, basis moves for the remaining uh, meetings for the rest of the year. So this leads us here into one of the biggest weeks in earnings, uh, which is big tech. We got uh, essentially all the big tech aside from Tesla, which is already reported and done outstanding. Uh, we have Apple, we have Google, we have Microsoft, we have Amazon this week. Uh, we have Google... Uh, tomorrow night, um, which will be uh, quite interesting on how that will play out. Uh, that is one of the biggest ones uh, to be watching uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, but the biggest thing as far as everything else, uh, we're kind of preparing going into next week, the FOMC meeting. Uh, this is what we really have to be mindful of uh, because of that. Uh, we got Microsoft tomorrow and Amazon and Visa tomorrow night. We got UPS in the morning, uh, which kind of gets started off, I think, a little bit. But ultimately, next week, uh, what's again really going to matter is um, the meeting next week. We want to know how Apple does. We want to know how Microsoft does. Uh, we want to know how these big techs are doing with lockdowns and sanctions. How they're getting. Um, affected. Um, they very well could come in and destroy and crush earnings, uh, but for guidance uh, could be a concern. Now, this is something that they've been, uh, they've, we've essentially dealt with over the pandemic. We've talked about forward guidance and it's caused the market to come down only for uh, all these big industry leaders to still do come out on top. Uh, Apple actually didn't provide any forward guidance because they weren't sure and to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they turn around and do the same thing. Now, that's a, that's a bad sentiment for the market. The market doesn't like that. And it's caused Apple to sell off, even though after some amazing earnings. Uh, so for guidance, really, I think really here is what's going to matter. As long as things can still uh, do well, uh, which I think a lot of companies can, but for guidance. Uh, the biggest concern is uh, any kind of ad revenue. So or as we're seeing with Facebook, which they are reporting this week, um, a big chunk essentially from their ad revenue comes from Russia and Russia is not, they've essentially banned Facebook. Now, if the same kind of uh, thing applies to YouTube, uh, given with Google, uh, that could impact the company dramatically because uh, a huge chunk of their uh, profits essentially come from ad revenue from YouTube. So, so being said, we have to see how that affects uh, the markets, uh, but ultimately uh, it could lead us through a bad sign. This could just really just be a relief bounce. And it was a struggle to even get to where it is. Uh, now going into tomorrow, we might get some some earnings, so we might pop up. Uh, ultimately, it really depends on where we open. Uh, normally on a play like this, when it first uh, hits that retracement back to that 20, that first retest, you've got almost two solid days of selling before it's even touched that 20 EMA. Normally you get a hard rejection. Uh, you got a very difficult bounce here, a very weak bounce. Uh, so if this doesn't pop up at least to the 43.53, we could do some heavy selling again tomorrow. We really need to break that 4,200. If we break that 4,200, it's almost a solid sell down to the 41.50. Then you got the 4,100 psychological level. Uh, so there's a lot going on. And again, and again with the Fed next week and being so hawkish, we knew that there were going to be rate raises, but uh, they're starting to come in really high with 70 point basis moves. Uh, we're going to be dealing with this uh, for the remainder of the year. Again, it's more that sticker shock factor uh, because of the fact that uh, we've gone two years with no rate raises or anything like that. Uh, everything was essentially funded, well overfunded, and now we're coming into the year. Well, okay, now we got to kind of, 
you know, uh, s- s- essentially stop food e- spoon feeding the economy and we got to let it get out on its own again, especially after a pandemic. And so now you're going to get a lot of uh, volatility because of that. So um, we're going to have to see how the market does. Again, I don't see the market crashing or anything like that. It could still pull back uh, even to where we are. I've talked about this level last week. As long as we hold this level, we should be good. So it really matters if we can uh, still hold that 42.59 mark. If we can't, we start floating around here. Um, we might float around here until Fed and then pop back up. Uh, but we are creating a huge wedge here, if that is the case, uh, for maybe a breakout back to all-time highs after the Fed going into next week. Could be a possibility. Um but ultimately, we definitely do not want to break below uh, that 41.53 mark. I think if we break that, then you're starting to risk uh, some pretty big fall, a pretty big fall from that point. Again, the 20 EMA monthly, we've been bouncing off that for a while. Uh, but us keep testing this 20-day EMA monthly is not a good thing because uh, eventually it will break. And then um, from that point, again, you kind of go into a free fall after that. So. Uh, we have to see how the market does. Again, there's no real new news, I think, that will do that to us unless, again, like I said, the uh, the Fed comes in very hawkish, uh, which is expected, but um, which could, would sell us down to this level. And I think we kind of consolidate around here. Uh, but I think if that backstop is removed, I think is what could be the, the sole catalyst that would break us through this. Uh, so we have to really see. But again, I don't think they're going to remove that unless uh, the war goes away. Maybe they do. It's always a possibility. They keep bringing it up. That can happen at any time. I think that's more based off of, well, if the war stops at any moment, then they'll pull it. Uh, But again, if there's that fear there, I don't see the Fed removing that backstop as far as asset purchases. Uh, They'll raise rates as much as they need to, but I don't think that that backstop will be removed until something uh, with the war goes away. So, So going into tomorrow, uh, again, we're really watching those levels. We really want to see if we can hold again above that uh, 40 to 50 mark. Uh, and then a big thing to remind yourself, uh, if we start do start pushing up, which could happen because maybe we get good earnings. We've got FOMC. So then you're going to have to start watching uh, this uh, 43.90 mark because now that you broke through, you're going to get a retest. This is a retest of these EMAs. It's the first break. You're going to get a retest and a hard rejection off essentially roughly around that 4,400 mark around there uh, because you got all these EMAs, it's your first re-attempt. Re- uh, you might get rejected hard off of that going into next week and then you'll find yourself here next week for the FOMC meeting. Again, if the backstop is still there, I think we could push up. If they remove the backstop and continue to be hawkish with uh, rate raises, I could see us breaking and, and selling off there. Those are the two scenarios I see going over the next week or so. So it's the, this next week and uh, next week are going to be big, really big weeks in uh, essentially the direction of the markets. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, I would ultimately say watch my weekly update. It's still doing well. I don't see any problem with this. People were talking about the uh, some of the channel break and the selling off. Again, unless it breaks 30, uh, the 32, I mean, go pretty low. Uh, kind of have that 32 red zone here. But as long as it stays here, it's just consolidating, in my opinion, and will continue to rip up. Uh, again, it's following the market very closely. And considering that people are trying to go against the, um, inflation, uh, Bitcoin is almost running in parallel with the market or the index. Uh, so for tomorrow, again, the biggest ones I've been talking about, I gave you uh, over in the weekly update, I gave you a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, big moves coming out. Uh, they've got essentially priced in 200 points plus for Google, 200 points plus for Amazon, 70 points for Tesla. They got some really big moves they're trying to capture. So for me, I'm really looking at Apple and Facebook because they don't they have they don't have a ton uh, priced in, but I think they can really move. Even um, Microsoft as well. So uh, for Apple, they bounce off the 200 nicely today and started pushing back up. Uh, same thing with this. I think uh, maybe if Apple does well, it'll rally back up to the 167, uh, and then it will just kind of sell off. Maybe we get some bad continuation news or whatever, and then we could possibly start selling off again. And again, we want to watch that level as long as we don't break that to 158. 
Uh, I think we should be okay. But this is one I want to watch for earnings. This is one I might actually YOLO for earnings. Again, I think um, I have to definitely have to watch the expected move. I think the expected move is only seven points, uh, which is big for Apple. Uh, but nonetheless, I have to see where it ends up on a uh, day of earnings. And they're not till Thursday. So being said, a lot can happen between now and then. Uh, so, so I'll have to wait till we get a little bit closer to determine what we're going to do at that point. But uh, this is definitely one I want to watch. Again, like I was talking about the market index, your first break, you're going to get a retest, get a hard rejection off this 167. Uh, I think there's a strong possibility. Uh, so we'll have to see uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, Tesla is one I'm watching. This one, I'm, I'm really kind of watching this wedge. It's building this wedge. And if everything plays out, I can I just see Tesla chopping around until Fed. Again, if the backstop is removed, I think it sells off pretty heavy. If not, it could possibly break out and start ripping up. Uh, but really watch this wedge so you definitely don't want it to break below the 973, uh, 74 mark. I think if it does break that, I think we do have got some pretty heavy selling back down to the 900. But if not, uh, I think we can continue or we might be able to continue up to re-attempt to try to get to this high uh 148 again for tesla i don't see tesla going parabolic and running up to 1500 i just don't see that um it made its parabolic move uh, back here and it ran from essentially 700 to um 1100 right here i think that was its earnings move uh, now it did very well normally you have continuation but the market's been kind of crappy so uh, normally, if market's crappy and has good earnings, it's not going to matter. If it doesn't uh, push after a couple of days, uh, it will, the excitement of the earnings will go away and it will just start dying off, getting into its normal uh, cycle where it does sell off for like three or four weeks after earnings, uh, kind of preparing itself for the next earnings. Uh, so I can see it dropping down and start consolidating more before the next push up. Again, unless the market sentiment really changes, uh, but something to keep in mind. Uh, Facebook is the other one. I want to see that's done some heavy selling. It's holding the support here at the 186 mark. Um, this move, I think Facebook's going to get hit really bad on earnings. I would like it to try to pop back up to the 807 mark before earnings. Uh, their earnings is on Wednesday. So if they can make it there, I might take a yellow on this, possibly even both ways. Uh, more so to the, I think I'm favoring more so to the downside. Uh, they could surprise. That's why I say you could do either way. But uh, I'm talking about like cheap YOLO option plays for this because of that fact. And um, and, and go from there. Not expensive contracts. Again, it's YOLO. The risk management is everything. Uh, don't bet the house on something that you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Uh, but you can throw a little bit in the pot just in case because if it does go in your favor, uh, you can make out pretty well. Again, not, not financial advice, but... So one I want to watch wants to watch that level. Uh, this 180 mark, it's been holding extremely well. Uh, so I want to kind of see if it continues to hold that into tomorrow, which I think the market might pop a little bit tomorrow, or it might just again consolidate and wait to see what happens uh, with earnings. Once we start getting Microsoft and Google tomorrow, I think it'll kind of help uh, set the pace. Uh, UPS uh, is also earnings in the morning, it might also help set the pace. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I got for today. Uh, I don't got too much for today. I want to keep this video kind of short. Again, banks in general are kind of recovering. So I'm, I'm looking for everything kind of pop, give some sort of pop for the next couple of days. But after that, I think we're going to get start uh, going into the FOMC uh, mode. And then I think we're going to start selling and ho possibly holding that level that we've been kind of watching uh, today. And then, um, and then make a determine the direction if we'll go up or down on if that backstop is removed next week. Again, we know the, uh, the Fed is going to be hawkish. That's why we sold off so much at the beginning of the year. Uh, so again, if the as long as the asset purchasing continues, I think uh, the market will continue to push up uh, and try to go for all-time highs after that meeting, which is next, ultimately ends next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So you'll get the report and then you'll get Powell at 2.30. I think at that point, the market will digest whatever just happened, and then we can get a direction from that point. But from then, I think we're going to chop a lot in this range, 
until next week on Wednesday. But if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a like button. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.